One of the things I did recently was to get a new updated laptop for video creation. And because I use Adobe Premiere Pro, the default operating system for this is Windows. I don't need any comments about Linux. I have a dedicated laptop for Linux. So let's not get sidetracked with Microsoft bashing. I'll do the bashing for you. Anyway, I bought a new Dell XPS 15 with a 3050 NVIDIA and a 12th Gen i7 and it came with Windows 11 Home. I have not used Windows 11 Home before, by the way. I've always used Windows Pro. So I started up Windows and the first thing I discovered was that you could not start Windows Home without entering a Microsoft ID. I made a video about Windows 11 Pro and on that you can skip using a Microsoft account or Microsoft ID but on home you cannot. So in this video I will take you through my investigation of how to handle this Microsoft account issue. I'll talk about the risks of the Microsoft account as far as privacy and app surveillance are concerned. And I'll show you how I played around with this to remove the Microsoft account after the fact. It wasn't easy, but for those needing to use Windows, this could be educational to blunting the spying that's possible by Microsoft and third-party apps on your Windows machine. Frankly, I think it is an important step to get rid of the Microsoft account. If you want to find out what I did, stay right there. So I have to tell you the truth. The moment I found out that I could not log into Windows 11 Home without a Microsoft account, I was pissed. Yes, I could have upgraded to Windows 11 Pro, but to do that, you need to use a Microsoft account to download the updates from the Microsoft Store. So that didn't solve anything. I decided to go through the entire process of setting up Windows using a Microsoft account and then see if I can undo it. And that's what this little experiment is about. And at the end, I'll tell you why this is important. By the way, though I have removed the Microsoft account from this system in all the spots that I've found, I don't know what all the consequences are yet. So far, nothing important has been impacted. But don't follow my lead blindly here. You will lose certain things, I'm sure, things I don't care about, like OneDrive, maybe Cortana, maybe access to certain things in the Microsoft Store. At the moment, I'm using this computer as a productivity machine, and for that purpose, everything appears to work, especially the important Adobe Premiere Pro for me, which is the primary purpose of this machine. So first things first, I started the machine by logging in with an existing email address that I've associated with a Microsoft ID. This is not an ID I use for anything else, so it doesn't really have any activity. I didn't know if I could undo anything, so I used the email which likely has the least amount of data with Microsoft or anyone else. In the end, this step may not matter, but this is how I started it. Once you start Windows with your Microsoft account or Microsoft ID, you can get your machine activated by Microsoft, basically making sure your installation is valid. If you didn't know this, the product ID that you have to enter in every Windows install will also make the machine unique. So that itself is an identifier. This is what's used in Windows activation. This is probably another topic, so I'll let this lie for the moment. In the case of Dell, Windows was pre-installed, so the product ID was pre-installed as well. I did not mess with the product ID. Messing with this was not my objective since I didn't want to lose the Windows activation. I just wanted to focus on removing any identity on the device that could identify a specific user on the machine. Okay, after making sure the machine is activated, I went to privacy settings and made sure every zucking privacy related permission was turned off. This is very important and I discussed this in other Microsoft Windows videos. Then I went to settings, installed applications and started deleting applications that came standard. I removed OneDrive and McAfee specifically. I also removed Microsoft Office stuff that I was never going to use. 
As an important tip, do not install any new application at this point, at least not until we've eliminated the Microsoft ID. The next thing you need to do is to create new users on the machine. Now I have a very particular style in what I do and I will emulate it in this example. I always set up two new users in Windows. For our purposes, I will call the first user admin and the second user worker. You can do something similar. Call me crazy, but my admin user is never the admin. I may imply that in the username and it is the user I use most of the time, but it will have no admin rights. The one with the admin rights in this example is called worker. The reason I do this is that if someone is targeting my machine and wants to hack the admin user, they will assume the admin name is the admin. In Windows, you set up users using the other users in system settings. But you will only see this when you are in an administrator account. At the moment, your Microsoft account is an administrator by default. So while using that account, set up the new users. The important thing to note is that when it asks for the Microsoft ID of the new user, you tap on the option, I do not have this person's sign-in information. This process will allow you to set up a local account. Tap on that and a new window will show you the selection, add a user without a Microsoft account. And this will now allow you to create the local accounts. And as I said, my intent is to make two new users, admin and worker. Both of these new users must be set up as local accounts. Then, and this is important, set the account type for worker to be administrator and the other as a standard user. Next step, log out of the Microsoft ID account and log in under the administrator account, which in my example is worker. Now I go to the other users and system settings again, and then I will see the three users. Our next task is to delete the Microsoft ID account. But to show you the before and after, I will go to the command line and show you what is happening. Using the command wmic user account get name comma sid this will show me all the users that have been set up so far and you will see all the current users the one marked as rob is the one that is assigned to my microsoft account i want to show you a before and after once i delete the rob user which has the microsoft account this command will no longer show in the command line i want you to understand something here any desktop app like Chrome, for example, could run something equivalent to this wmic command or access the Windows registry directly and get a list of current users on your Windows system, something Facebook likes to do. One of the values here is called the SID or security ID. This is the unique identifier associated with each user. With this SID, a desktop app can actually find matching entries in the Windows registry to know the associated username, which is the Microsoft account or Microsoft ID. Now, there are easier ways for a desktop app like a Chrome to get the Microsoft account. And in fact, I looked at the registered apps and many of them inserted the Microsoft account in the registry entry of those apps. I believe this is because the installer itself called MSI or Microsoft installer is of course from Microsoft. It is one of the steps it does. But before we continue, let me show you that when you delete the user with a Microsoft account, Windows Home will function completely normally and now the command wmic will show no user associated with the original Microsoft ID. At this point, I thought I was done. But in Windows, all system entries and spy fragments are found in the Windows registry. Just so you understand how this works, go to the command prompt from the admin account, worker in my case, and type regedit. And the entire Windows registry is here for you to access. 
all identifiers used by Microsoft and other apps are in this registry and has been there for 25 years. In order to find what data it knows about the Microsoft account, I did a find and specifically I was looking for my email address in the entire registry. Each occurrence of find will give you a result and you need to hit find next to go to the next one. At this point, even after deleting the Microsoft ID user, I found easily a dozen spots where the Microsoft ID still existed. The main one I found is over here under this key. And the most significant item is the one marked as registered owner and registered organization. In my case, I blanked this out and so far that has not given me any issues. I suppose you could also enter some fake name and organization here. It doesn't apparently get checked. It doesn't have to be an email. I mentioned that this registered owner is automatically transferred to the installation registry entry of any new app. So this is extremely important to modify. Make sure it does not reveal who you are. Otherwise, an app like Chrome would automatically know your Microsoft ID and it doesn't need any special rights for this since it will be in the application's own registry settings. An app could easily find out your user info using a command like this on your machine. Who am I slash user? Again, something Facebook likes to do. So always assume that some identifiers on the machine could be pilfered, including the machine or computer name. For goodness sakes, do not make your machine John Smith computer or John Smith family or anything with an identifier. Make it as obscure as possible. To be clear, your goal is to not have your computer leak an identity. So whatever you do on the internet is traceable to a specific device. Again, to summarize, the registered owner is an important identifier to remove and modify. Now, as you will find when you search the registry for your email address, there will be many entries. One of them, for example, will automatically assign your Microsoft account to OneDrive. There's also some association with Windows Defender, the built-in antivirus, and many spot that will indicate that the credential used as a Microsoft account is a validated credential. I didn't want to delete the entry since I didn't know the effect of that, so instead I changed every occurrence of my email in the registry to a fake email address that does not exist, at least for me. There were quite a few in my case, maybe a dozen, and I removed them all. So now my Windows machine has no trace in the registry of my original Microsoft account. Just to summarize my registry modifications, I changed the registered owner to blank and registered organization to blank. All the rest where I found my email, I did not delete but changed the entry to some fake email. Now just be careful here. You may want to back up your registry before you mess it up. Do not be deleting things here or you will have to reinstall. Modifying the registry is dangerous business. In my case though, using the limited find steps, I only modify those areas that had my email and I never deleted an entry. Okay, what have I accomplished here? What is the point of all this? This exercise is more important than you think. The primary issue with privacy is identity. If you make moves around the internet and your device is not identified, then it doesn't matter what data you leak since it cannot be attributed to a specific person. This is the basic lesson I teach you. Microsoft, by forcing us to enter a Microsoft ID and then scattering this data all over the registry, means that any app running on the machine could theoretically retrieve your Microsoft account even if you did not provide it to the app. Think about this in the context of Chrome. Let's say your Microsoft account is a Gmail account. Now this association is extremely revealing to Google because the Gmail account is also your Google ID. So now every other device you own, like Androids, are now cross-tracked. They know what you are doing on each machine. You could be using Chrome without logging in and Chrome knows who you are anyway. So if you're not aware of this, you can't hide. 
For this reason as well, do not use Gmail ever as a Microsoft ID. It provides a new association. Again, it is important to understand that on Microsoft Windows, apps have greater access to this data than on a phone. So if you're running Instagram and TikTok on your Windows computer, it is likely revealing your Microsoft account to Instagram and TikTok as well. All of these identify your specific machine. If you try to create different identities on these platforms, good luck with that. You will not be able to do it. I've never worried about the Microsoft ID before Windows 11 Home. It was not a requirement in Windows 10 Home or Pro. But Microsoft is overstepping once again. Don't ever use things like OneDrive or even Cortana. These are spyware. The good news with Microsoft spyware is at least they're fairly easy to beat. I couldn't provide you with a similar tip to remove the Apple ID from Mac OS. You're pretty much Zuck there. Now understandably, the pro Linux crowd will step in here and be flabbergasted at these extra steps to allow privacy when no extra steps are needed if you use Linux. This is absolutely true. Linux does not have any of this crap. But unfortunately, Linux can't run everything and many need to use Windows for some work-related function. So this will blunt the effect of the beast. Now what if you use Microsoft Office 365? Remember that anything granted access via browser is limited to the browser, so that is not the same as embedding the identity on the machine itself. I wouldn't use Microsoft Office 365 when I can use the free LibreOffice with no spyware. But if you want to use it, go ahead. Hope this helps. My company is focused on providing solutions to help you all maintain your privacy. We have the Brax2 privacy phone, which is basically an invisible phone. It cannot be tracked by big tech. We have Bytes VPN, which is a stealthy VPN that doesn't scream that you're on a VPN and not crowding thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which allows you to use email without any metadata and comes with five domains. These products and others are on my store on Braxme. Please visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you as always for watching and see you later.